Hello, hello, beautiful women of the world. <laughs> Welcome to my show, Your Radiant Life After 45. It is a show for women after 45, in their 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and beyond. We women have not only a longer lifespan than most men, but this is our time. We have entered the era of the divine feminine. So if you are here and you are here as a woman, then you not only have done this by choice, but you are well equipped for this amazing time of shift and change from the dense three-dimensional world uh, into a higher frequency of the fourth and fifth dimension. And this doesn't mean we go somewhere. It's an inner journey. It's an inner awareness. It's the opening of the heart. It's the opening of the, um, <clears throat> of the heart chakra and the alignment and the activation of all of your chakras. And your divine DNA st uh, strength, um, st String, strain, chain. Our DNA is, is um, has only two strings right now, right? But they are actually 12 and we are in the development of um, having all of those activated. So we have um, 12 strings of DNAs within us, but only two are activated maybe three for others, maybe four for others. It, it all depends. Anyway, I'm so glad you are here because, um, yeah, without you, um, I would just read my books and do my studies and do my private coaching. But this is an opportunity for me to be on a larger platform and share with you what I feel passionate about. And right now I have been very uh, involved in the gene keys. I was only, I only became aware of the gene keys um, a couple of months ago, maybe three, three months ago. And I am totally fascinated. I don't know if you know the gene keys by Richard Rudd. And um, it's fascinating, it's amazing. Uh, it's probably one of the most profound uh, uh, pieces of, of work that I put my heart, my mind, my emotions, my whole being into. And I highly recommend that you find out about it. And that is one of the reasons why today I want to, I want to share, I want to actually read from the gene keys uh, for you. And um, there are different, there are the gene keys, which is the big book, which explains all about the paths, the different paths. Then there is the golden, it's called the golden path, um, love. And then there is um, the gene keys, the golden path, genius. Um, and they are a little bit more evolved. Well, Everything has their has their time and purpose, uh, but one of the first ones um, I I got and I believe it is great to start here. It's really the art of contemplation. Now, if you are on your spiritual path, you think you know all about contemplation, and since I am on my spiritual path for over forty years, so I thought I knew everything about contemplation. But this, what I have been reading, and, and you see, I have been <laughs> highlighting quite a bit in this book. What I have been uh, learning here is um, goes deeper, you know, is even more uh, profound. It speaks to a higher level of, of you. You don't just read it with your, uh, with your mind, but you understand it at a deeper level. 
But anyway, so today I want to, in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about and read about uh, the gentle path of awakening to awakening and the, the art of contemplation. And the purpose of science is to unlock life's many mysteries and attempt to understand the way things work. Yeah, that's what science tries to tell us. How do things work? But there is there is another level even to science, and it's a mystery. But science doesn't really do very well with the word mystery, right? Um, so I continue just, this is just at, uh, on the back of, of the book here. But there are subjects that may always be important penetrable to science. It cannot be penetrated. It cannot be fully understand, understood uh, through science. And you and I, we human beings, we are such a mystery. While we may one day understand how a human being works, our true depth lies beyond the domain of objective understanding will always be. So we can only really peel layers uh, of uh, and, and look under the next layer to understand something at a deeper level, right? So to know what we really are, we will have to go beyond the mind itself. And this is the purpose of the art of contemplation, which I'm going to start reading to you a little bit um, today. So a little part from the introduction says, modern science, the modern scientific mind doesn't always sit comfortably with the notion of mystery. The purpose of science is to unlock life's many mysteries and attempt to understand the way things work. But there are subjects that may always be impenetrable to science. Consciousness itself is such a mystery. While we may one day understand how it works, its true depth lies beyond the domain of objective understanding. To know what we really are, we will have to go beyond the mind itself. And this is the purpose of the art of contemplation. Because to understand yourself, you can you start with your mind, but then you probably have done this so many times and it it usually takes you back to what you already know and what you have learned and your past. Um, but to uncover a deeper level, um, you must go into the unknown. You must accept that what you discover you have not experienced before. And that may be new territory, which isn't that exciting? Isn't that the mystery? So. It says contemplation is an art, and because it is an art, it is something that we can learn. However, sometimes a sharp and powerful intellect can be a hindrance in learning this simple art. And, you know, I understood and have even said it in, in my coachings and teachings for so many decades, 40, 50 years, that... Um, Simple is not um, superficial or dumb, or it is actually profound. Simplicity is the most profound, profound thing because when we can bring it back to oneness, which seems simple, right? You are one with the divine. I am one with the divine. It's just a simple truth. And yet the most profound truth there is. So there is so much to unpack in simplicity. Okay. So the, a powerful internet can be a hindrance in learning this simple art of contemplation. Paradoxically, for many of us, contemplation begins as a form of unlearning. As we let go of reliance on our intellect and open up new pathways 
of awareness inside of ourselves. So I will only read parts of it, not, not the whole book or the whole chapter. Um, but I think it's maybe important to understand the difference between contemplation, meditation, and mindfulness. Many of us have heard about the practice of mindfulness, and we all have heard of meditation and maybe practice meditation. You may even have practice, practice both or all of these techniques. If you already have a practice such as meditation, it will not in any way conflict with the art of contemplation. In fact, you could see contemplation as a very broad term that can contain other practices such as mindfulness. Thus, as you learn to contemplate, you will simultaneously deepen any other practice that you are doing. If you happen to do yoga, for example, then contemplation will give you more inward focus and will help you integrate it even more into your daily life. If you do not do any other inward focus practice or have little or no experience of such things, that is also perfectly fine because contemplation is very generous and can pick up and put down anything in need it needs in order to achieve its primary aim, which is to bring you into a state of profound equilibrium. The main difference between contemplation and other mindfulness or and, and, and either mindfulness or meditation is that contemplation also uses the mind, but in a proactive way. We make use of mindfulness by inwardly watching our mind, our emotions and body. But with contemplation, we are also doing something active. Contemplation engages the power of mind, emotion and body. And it fuses and uses their energy to bring about an increased state of self-awareness, freedom and you may not uh, expect this, and general prosperity. That's the real power of contemplation is that it naturally turns into decisive action. And that action brings about fundamental changes in our lives, including prosperity. <laughs> the other great advantage of contemplation is that it is a Synthesis, uh, uh, synthesizing art. It brings together both left and brain, left and right brain techniques into full awareness. For example, it makes use of the practice of mindfulness in the background while using the power of imaginary thinking in the forefront. In this sense, contemplation has many avenues of approach to suit different personality types, whether you favor an intellectual, emotional, or kinesthetic approach, this is an art that can adapt easily, can adapt itself easily to your needs. And here you probably have heard the Latin saying, spiro ergo uh, prospero the breath of freedom. And Spiro, Aero, Prospero is I breathe, therefore I prosper. We don't really think of it like that, right? This is not just a nice saying, it is the foundation stone of the com a completive way. If you contemplate, then this is the cornerstone. As we grow from children into adults, we gradually develop unconscious stress patterns in the body and mind that prevent us from breathing deeply. So when you breathe deeply, your breath becomes a contemplation in its own. And it is a state of prosperity because you are open to receive when you breathe openly, yes? So, spiro ergo prospero, I breathe, 
therefore I prosper. Okay, so I'm skipping things in here, but um, being the purpose of life, we would all like to know what our true purpose in life is. Despite all of the modern conveniences gifted through our techn technological age, the one thing that often eludes us is a deep sense of purpose and fulfillment. Once again, we tend to believe that fulfillment may come from something that we create or do in our outer life. If we met the perfect partner, for example, if we found the perfect home, or if we had the perfect job, we believe that we might then know what it means to be fulfilled. This then becomes our mission in life, to try to create these perfect conditions. But the art of contemplation teaches us something different. It teaches us that the outer rests and relies upon the inner. We can have a perfect life on the outside, but remain unhappy in the, on the inside. And isn't that the case with so many who have a mass, uh, you know, a life that others say, oh my God, you have made it. You have everything you ever wanted. But that doesn't mean that they are happy, that they are fulfilled, that they feel that they live a purposeful life. Right? And, and you know this. And it is so easy to, to believe that if we have this or if we have achieved that or if we have gained that or accomplished the other, then life will be beautiful. We will be happy. We will be prosperous. We will feel freedom and purpose and fulfillment. Only if it is in alignment with your inner life, right? So, and you have seen people who have very little on the outside, but are very joyous on the inside. And I, I just two months ago came from Mexico. And in Mexico, uh, there are these little villages that are not only colorful, but they radiate with, with light because the people are, are joyful, even though they are poor. The children play and they, they have they don't have a lot of things. They have barely um, the minimum, but they are they are joyful. They have a, they feel in in um, in alignment with with life itself. Uh, they don't have the the needs that that we believe we must accomplish in order to to have a fulfilled life. Anyway, the ultimate goal of contemplation is to bring both our inner and outer lives into balance. Then we can be inwardly fulfilled and outwardly content. Let me repeat that. That's one of the sentences that I have um, highlighted. The ultimate goal of contemplation is to bring both our inner and outer lives into balance then we can be inwardly fulfilled and outwardly content. And contemplation achieves this aim through teaching us how to cultivate a sense of presence. You know, these little children in, um, in the villages, for example, how I've seen them oops, in Mexico, um, they, they do have this incredible joy because they don't believe that anything is missing in their life. Um, you know, they have that that quality of, of um, enjoying each other, their families, their community. And, um, and as long as they're not starved and have a roof over their head, they are perfectly happy. It's, it's quite um, incredible. Okay, so that it really shows that the true purpose of life is not something we are here to do. Rather, it is something we are here to be. 
It is the quality of inner virtue that we bring to everything we do in life. The being has to come first. If we can bring the being into what we enjoy to do, then we have an alignment. Does it make sense? And here it says, to find our purpose is to find a nobility of spirit that pervades our entire life. When we have found this, what we do is of less importance because the doing may change. However, our being is the one thing that will never change. It alone makes us unshakable, stable, and radiant. We become the purpose of our life. And how many times have we um, heard and, and uh, with an unhappy voice that, that um, people say or women say, I still don't know what my purpose is. They are searching for their purpose of life, um, but they search for it in what they're supposed to do rather than um, looking for the inner being. So, <clears throat> contemplation through time. The art, um, maybe one want to read this, let me see. Of course, it comes from um, the uh, pre-Neolithic times, um, the shamans or the shamans, the purpose of contemplation and to find connection is really to build bridges and to come to realize that everything in life is connected to everything else. And in ancient times, the elders and uh, the, um, uh, the first nation, um, all who are deeply connected to nature know this, right? It is that they feel that they are connected to the to the four elements of water, fire, earth, and air. That uh, they are calling upon um, the elementals, the uh, the forces of nature, because they know that um, the earth is connected to everything in the universe, and we are connected to the earth in every in every way. So. Everything is connected to everything else. That's uh, such a simple but profound realization that maybe you want to, um, to contemplate even this. This alone is amazing to contemplate upon, right? Okay, so... The first confirmation is really inside. The more space and pauses you create in your daily life, the more relaxed and open your mind becomes. And an open mind is a mind that can suddenly make a quantum leap in understanding. Understanding something in the moment or understanding a greater concept. And we know that if we are busy and overwhelmed with uh, all of the things that are happening um, outside of us and our electronic devices are constantly disturbing us, right? So the pauses in our lives that, that we only we can create, only you can create a pause unless a pause is um, forced on you because maybe a stop sign, something as simple as a stop sign. So you need to pause, even though you may be upset internally because you want to hush, to rush or hurry uh, to get somewhere uh, else. This is a forced pause. And rather than being upset or, or becoming um, anxious and, and frustrated, take it as a, as a pause because it's only a minute or two to um to just become still and feel into your body feel into what's going on in your in your mind and um 
an open mind is a mind that can suddenly make a quantum leap, as I just read, right? Insight is a spontaneous revelation about something that was previously hidden from our understanding. So what I'm saying is that even with such a force and, and, um, and we've so often when we are in traffic have that constantly that we have to stop at a red light. It's a forced pause. What do you do with it? You can use it to just contemplate something, to just become still. Pay attention when the light turns green, but, um, and yet you, you can, rather than being frustrated, open yourself up and allow your mind to do something constructive. Have a mini contemplation or just enjoy the pause as a stillness, as a maybe a, a pause to breathe properly, to breathe deeply and um, uh, watch your inhalation and your exhalation. Yeah. The power of pausing. Pausing often leads directly to insight, which is the spontaneous unraveling of one of those old knots inside your, our mind. As it splits open, and it can happen at any time, we suddenly feel a rush of understanding and release as we finally see and let go of an old pattern of thinking that has dodged us maybe for years. You see, isn't that a miracle? Wouldn't that be a miracle to actually um, experience this? Let me see, do I have anybody with me here? No, so I believe I may go um, the full hour because I think this is so amazing and hopefully so beneficial to you uh, to get in some of these uh, in a, a deeper understanding of um, of um, contemplative, completative, com 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 contemplation as a practice to go deeper, unravel, and um, get in contact with this mysterious uh, revelations of a higher mind that can be only triggered through pause and stillness. As you practice the technique of pausing over a period of time, sooner or later, you will experience a rush of such insights. It may come suddenly or it may well up gradually. When it does come, you will suddenly realize the power of contemplation as it impacts your mind, freeing you from limiting ways of thinking and opening up new ways of seeing yourself in the world. Yes, wouldn't that be incredible? It can take you out of your, you know, your, your, the rut of always thinking the same thoughts because that's what our um, subconscious mind does. It just runs a program, always bringing us uh, into back into the past where all of these thoughts that we have uh, continuously have been generated. So we are never really exploring at the future, maybe as an imagination of something that may make us um, anxious, but the future is really the unknown and we don't like to go into the unknown. So we tend to go back into the past, that which feels familiar. So applying insights to your life, one of the great advantages of having a free mind is that your thinking expands exponentially to encompass a huge diversity of fields. Genius is the ability to understand both logically and intuitively the central truth that unifies and unites all fields of knowledge 
and endeavor. One, one only a truly open mind has the ability to synthesize all of the data. And we have millions of bits of data every, every minute in our minds. So do something constructive with it. Your contemplative uh, practice over time will open up new neural pathways in your brain that bridge both left and right hemispheres. This means that whenever you experience an insight, you will see a vast web of interconnections and you will sense the correct harmonic arrangements of those patterns. This new gift of understanding can then be applied to any field, from business to education to the arts, anything in your life uh, profits from it. You will find that you can greatly increase the effectiveness of anything you do, of any system or method, from writing or doing the washing up, <laughs> or from parenting to running a business. You see how incredibly um, useful the art of contemplation is. The other unique application of a contem com contemplative mind is its ability to break new ground. This is known as silo busting. Many of us develop a deep understanding in only one or perhaps two fields over the course of our lives. We often live within a relatively tight container or confines held back by the limits of our education, our cultural conditioning, or what we were um, almost only allowed from home uh, to experience if we believe that this is a constraint that we have. But through contemplation, we begin applying our gift of insight to all manner of different areas of culture and thought, thus bringing into our lives new ideas, new allies, new friends, as well as a host of fresh opportunities. And don't we all need this in these changing times where sometimes uh, we believe that whatever we have been busy with or have been have learned and wanted to maybe um, uh, use our practice for the rest of our lives is not what we what we are aligned with anymore or not may, maybe not even appropriate in the outer world anymore. So the reward of pausing, the mind of light, your new gift of insight can bring some extraordinary rewards into your life. Chief among those is lucidity of mind. After some time, you will find that your mind grasps the essence of any particular problem spontaneously and effortlessly. The main hallmark of a lucid mind is its ability to transform any challenge into a creative opportunity. As you learn the art of contemplation, you will even find that your thinking itself begins to pause as little spaces begin to open out between your thoughts. Open out or open up. Here it says open out between your thoughts because a clear mind repels both doubt and confusion. And this new sense of inner spaciousness, you know, those little gaps between your thoughts, when you pause, then you create those pauses, creates those gaps. And this new sense of inner spaciousness can give you a fresh confidence in the power of your own mind that you will transmit everywhere you go and, in, uh, and will bring into everything you do. The literal translation, oh, here it, it says, in Japan, where the art of contemplation has been perfected through the in, incisive practice of Zen Buddhism, one of the characters used for the word contemplation is, and then it shows those, those um, two uh, 
science. The literal translation of these two characters is light flashed through mind. Light flashed through mind. Many humans have in, intuited that the mind operating at its highest potential is connected to the notion of light. We speak of um, flashes of intuition, right? All of a sudden, I have, I feel as if some a flash of, of an insight or intuition. And that is the light, the illumination and the enlightenment. And all the great mystical traditions allude to this inner light that exists in a state somewhere just beyond our ordinary mind. And the highest goal of the art of contemplation is ultimately to reveal this inner light. So doesn't that suggest that the art of contemplation in its highest form can lead to enlightenment? To me, this is not written here, but to me, this is a um, natural consequence. How, how beautiful and cool is that? Your mind's greatest spiritual potential is to see the same truth resonate, resonating within all things and all beings. This lofty goal comes as a result of many years of dedicated, dedicated contemplative practice. However, despite being difficult to attain, such states have been shown to be real by many wise ones who have gone before us. Let this be a great encouragement for you and me, for us, as you sharpen and hone your mind's ability through the art of contemplation. One day, your reward will be to see through this universal mind and directly inhabit this magical state of unity known as the mind of light, the mind of light. This is so beautiful. And maybe I'll, maybe I leave it here. And maybe I just read a couple of things that I have. Um, I'm not continuing, you know, where I left off, but um, what I have highlighted here is that every pause is a field of transformation. So every time you pause, you allow your inner mind to create a, a quantum jump because you tap into the universal field, the quantum field where everything exists. And this field of transformation is also known as the cornerstone of a second technique known as pivoting. And don't we all pivot? Because if something is not, um, we don't feel in alignment with something anymore, then what we need to do is we need to see how we pivot into a, a, a more appropriate or better alignment, right? Pivoting is about actively using our contemplation as a far fulcrum to bring about a personal transformation. It's when our contemplation becomes action. Pivoting is a practice derived from Eastern traditions where it is seen as a means of transforming our desires or our shadows into a transcendent, transcendent view of reality. In our contemporary vision of contemplation, pivoting is an act of will that in the space of a single second changes the direction of our energy from a downward arc to an upward spiral. Visualize that, isn't that beautiful? The secret of contemplation is that you are 
100% with yourself, inside yourself. This is the most exciting and most rewarding uh, place to be. Don't we know or, or are we not uh, inclined to see the second part of our lives or the later stages of our life as more of an inward journey rather than the bustle of the outside world? Yes, and it's the most exciting journey. On deep self-reflection, you realize that the state you are in is just a deep state of stillness, almost like a numbness. You remember that this is not unique to you, but universal to all human beings. And it is a place where you can practice self compassion a compassion and from there you go further into yourself into your heart until you find the tiniest flame so many um, of us and I have heard this in in many um, many of my clients that they feel this numbness because they they just want to shut themselves off the, um, the horrific activities, uh, the, the wars, the fighting, the um, atrocities, the suffering in the outside world. And um, then they want to shut off their inner feeling to it. So they want to create a certain numbness. But that numbness is not life force energy. It is not where you can experience your true being. But just know that there is always a small flame in the, mid in the midst of numbness. You candle this precious flame. You, you, you cradle it. And just like, like the flame of a candle, um, that flame that is not of the candle but is inside of you, you, you nurture it. You cradle it like a tiny spark in the cold winter's night. You gently, gently fan the flame with patience until it grows itself. It grows again inside you. It grows and it becomes larger and brighter. Uh, and this can take several days or longer, but over time your awareness and courage help to bring this flame back to life. You, be, you begin to feel you again, your human self again. You feel warmth and hope dawn inside you. You have made self-compassion and love the pivot for a total change in awareness. And having done it once, you draw strength from knowing you can do it again. Whenever you need, you have learned to bring your heart back to life. And I want to leave you with this because there's so much more, but just know that even if you feel that inner numbness, that you feel that your, your joy, your inner joy, your, your warmth, your inner life, the, um, the juice, the excitement for your life has waned, know that it is never gone. That inner flame is always there. It may only be at the worst, in the worst case scenario, it may only flicker, but you can nurture it back to, um, to a beautiful fire of passion and zest for life. Um, it is by through contemplation and I will highly recommend that you look into this book The Art of Contemplation it is absolutely incredible and I have underlined a lot because this is not just a book to read it is a book it's, it is a book it is material 
that uh, will not only uplift your spirit, but the more you study it and then practice it, the more you get out of it. So it becomes almost like a Bible, you know, keep it with you. And um, maybe you want to have at least two books, one to underline maybe and, and one uh, or one to give away, one underline and another one to, to just keep for reading. But when you study it, because I found that going back into it, there are other things that come up. So at the end, I may have almost everything um, highlighted that could happen. So I hope you have enjoyed this session with me. I really felt compelled to uh, reading and um, giving some of my own experience with this beautiful book, The Art of Contemplation by Richard Rudd, uh, part of the Gene Keys. And I highly recommend you look into it and see uh, what beautiful um, changes in your life can happen. Because in the end, this is what it's all about, right? We, we want to, to change our life. We want to become more alive. We want to become more loving. We want to have a deeper experience of who we are and all of these incredible things. Yes? Okay. So this is it um, right now for me. And uh, I say bye-bye for now. Yes. Please come back next Saturday. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I will continue the reading. But as I said, the best would be for you to actually get the book and study it yourself. All of my love to you. Bye-bye for now.